voice vote. Sergeant at Arms, is there a motion to approve the appointment of Sergeant Arms for this meeting? And moved by Alderman Hartford and second by Alderman Butts. Um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried by voice vote. We have presentations uh, this evening. Uh, Clayton will manage that, so we want to begin that. The first one is the proclamation for the Chinese New Year.
tonight we have a number of recognitions, a number of events for the rest of the week. In fact, you have a, a registration sheet coming around for the aldermen so we can keep a tally with all the things that are going on as tomorrow we uh, pay honor and tribute to our fallen soldier, Miguel Villalone, at East Aurora High School at 2 p.m. Uh, we invite the community out for that as well, of course. Tonight we celebrate with our Chinese members of our Chinese community, Chinese New Year. It began this past weekend on January 25th. It's the year of the red. It's a time to celebrate new beginnings and to paint the town red in honor of the Lunar New Year. Uh, during a number of celebrations that can last for up to two weeks, we're honored to recognize Chinese New Year for the first time here at City Council. Uh, but under Mayor Irving's one Aurora focus, we've certainly strengthened relationships with the Chinese community over the past two and a half years. We've hosted three delegations from China here at City Hall. We've implemented cultural programs on Chinese music and history. Mayor Irvin was the guest speaker and the special guest of the Chinese Council General last fall at the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China in Chicago. And uh, we're very proud of the current development that is happening at Pacifica Square with Mr. Eddie Nee and Ms. Judy Nee and the Windfall Group at Route 59 in New York Street. And we are excited to continue to build our partnership with the United Chinese Americans Illinois chapter with an internship program and a number of cultural events throughout the year. And so tonight we have representing the United Chinese Americans Illinois chapter. If you can please give a round of applause to Ms. Yan Bellatoni and her guests as they come down. <laughs> and we also have from the Windfall Group, you guys can come right down to the center here. From the Windfall Group, it's Vice President Ms. Judy Neve. If we can give her a round of applause as well. Mayor's Award of Excellence to present. We'll do the United Chinese Americans first. Alderman Seville can read that and again we'll accept. Okay, thank you, Clayton. Um, the Mayor's Award of Excellence is honorably presented to United Chinese Americans Illinois Chapter for enriching and empowering the greater Aurora community through civic encouragement, civic engagement, political participation, youth development, and sharing Chinese heritage here locally and throughout the state and nation. Uh, and this is by Mayor Richard C. Urban, the 58th Mayor of the City of Aurora. Before Dan speaks, we also have another presentation. We also will present to the Windfall Group, building the Pacific Square, which will be the largest Asian-themed shopping mall in the United States of America, right here in Aurora. And this is the Mayor's Award of Excellence is honorably presented to Windfall Group Pacifica Square for being a stalwart community partner with the City of Aurora and for your commitment to the preservation and enrichment of heritage through education, empowerment, and economic development. Thank you for choosing Aurora as the home of Pacifica Square. Mayor C. Irvin, 58th Mayor of the City of Aurora. Good evening, everyone, uh, city council members, city staff, guests. Um, on behalf of Pacifica Square and UCA Illinois, we would like to wish you all a happy Lunar New Year. Um, so, uh, we would like to be we would like to celebrate Lunar New Year every year at Pacifica Square with lion dancing, food, drinks, and music, uh, starting next year. So we're looking forward to that, and we invite all of you to attend. Next, uh, I have Arthur here. He's going to talk a little bit about Lunar New Year and what it's about. Uh, so Lunar New Year is the new year based on Chinese lunar calendar. And this year, it's 2020, uh, is actually the year of the rat. And this is the first year of the 12-year zodiac cycle. And in Chinese culture, the rat is kind of like the symbol of uh, wisdom and, I'll say, good fortune. And so I wish everyone a happy new year. Thank you. Arthur. Actually, he just moved to Aurora a few months ago. And something about Arthur I want to share with you. Uh, in China, there was a very uh, uh, competitive uh, TV show. It's kind of like Americans' uh, Jeopardy is completely intellectual competition. Arthur won the national champion of China in 2018. <laughs> 
strong. We are Aurora strong. We are together as one Aurora. Through the good and the bad, high and lows, no matter what is thrown our way. End quote by Mayor Irvin. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and the council members and the audience. So glad to have the opportunity today to share with you more about UCA and its involvement in the community. Hope to bring Aurora and the UCA closer together in the new future. UCA stands for United Chinese America and it's a uh, American. It is a nationwide nonprofit, nonpartisan federation and community civic movement. It's, it is to enrich, empower Chinese Americans and their communities through civic engagement, political participation, heritage sharing, youth development, and a greater understanding between US China, US and China for the well being of all Americans and this world. It is established in 2017 by a group of professionals. So far, we have 11 branches, 30 community partners across the country, and Aurora will be number 31, hopefully. Asian American is a sleeping giant. It's about time for us to contribute to the community to bring more diversity and more culture to this country. The civic participation and youth program that we have participated so far is we have hosted many youth development programs, including the civil engagement intern for youth group, including youth volunteer programs, the Christmas with Seniors concert volunteer for Friendship is Forever in downtown Chicago, anti-bully conference. We also have a special uh, workshop just for uh, our group of people. It's called Asian Parents American Children Workshop. And we have participated in the political engagement. Uh, this year we have elected the first Asian American state representative to Illinois in the entire history of Illinois, uh, Theresa Ma. We also invited Andrew Young to participate in our second annual national conference in 2018. He will be participating in the next debate on February the 7th as the only colored presidential candidate. For heritage sharing, and thanks for, to Aurora and also to the community, have invited us to join the festival, the Jiaozi Festival, which we held every year to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And this is going to be our fourth annual uh, celebration, but because of the chrono uh, flu disease, so we have to cancel it, unfortunately. So next year, we're going to prepare more jiaozi to make up for what we lost this year. And we also hosted Chinese musical festivals. We invited national level musicians to come to Chicago to perform in downtown concert in many neighborhoods. And February is a Black History Month. At UCA, we also believe what Dr. King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but, bear, but, by, but by where he stands at times of challenge or controversial. We, as a group of UCA, would like to participate as much as possible to the greater country, greater community of Aurora. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Another round of applause for the United Chinese Americans. <laughs> the pinfall group are excited to watch the development take place over 59 in New York Street. Thank you so much, Judy Yen, the entire team. We also, this evening, on this ability to stay down, we are honoring staff members. We have our quarterly staff recognition here which includes this year for the first time, the Aurora Police Department, their promotion ceremony, the swearing in of new officers. But first, we recognize our manager of Aurora Animal Care and Control. We can give a round of applause to Miss Anna Payton. <laughs> Anna's being recognized because she's been reelected president of the Illinois Animal Welfare Federation a nonprofit association of humane societies, animal control agencies, rescue groups, and other welfare groups. The Federation provides training opportunities for animal welfare enthusiasts. And is also, on behalf of the National Association for Animal Welfare Management, was appointed the Midwest Regional Vice Chair and the Co-Chair for Best Practices for Animals Care Control Committee 
nationally. So she represents us here locally and throughout the nation. Another big round of applause for Anna Taylor. It's my honor to present the Mayor's Award of Excellence. Uh, which is honor honorably presented to Anna Payton, Aurora Animal Control, Aurora Animal Care and Control Facility, for going above and beyond the scope of duties to represent your industry through leadership roles at the local and regional and national levels. Signed, Mayor Richard C. Urban, 59th Mayor of Aurora. Congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate the honor. I, I'm just doing my job, but I appreciate the recognition. So thank you for letting me serve our community. I said this evening, we're so excited to begin this new tradition here in 2020, we do our promotion ceremonies and swear in ceremonies right here at City Council for the Aurora Police Department. Let's give a big round of applause for the finest force. <laughs> we will promote four amazing officers, and we also will swear in nine others. Please welcome to the microphone the Deputy Chief of the Aurora Police Department, Deputy Chief Keith Jackson. more people looking this way than where I was facing. <laughs> uh, good evening. First of all, I do want to thank everyone for coming out and joining us tonight. My name is Keith Jackson. I'm the Deputy Chief with the Aurora Police Department. On behalf of Chief Kristen Zeman and the men and women of the Aurora Police Department, I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us for tonight's uh, to celebrate the promotion of officers and sergeants and the recognition of the newest officers to join in our ranks. Being promoted is a culmination of a lot of hard work, dedication, and demonstrated leadership. It is often said that a police sergeant is the backbone of the supervisory ranks as they bear the primary burden of supervising the men and women who are, who are the face of our agency. Lieutenants also share a great deal of responsibility as they are tasked with directing the resources under their purview to ensure that the department's mission and goals are met. So, Gentlemen, let's get started. Our first, first promotee, Lieutenant Robert Wallers. <laughs> Lieutenant Robert Wallers started with the Aurora Police Department as a police cadet on August 15, 1988. He was sworn in as a police officer on January 28th, 1991, that was exactly 29 years ago today. Wow. He served as a patrol officer, a field training officer, a DARE officer, an SOG investigator, a detective in investigations, and a member of Gavel. On July 8th, 2003, Rob was promoted to sergeant, and during his time as sergeant, he was assigned to the patrol unit, investigations division, and he was the Area 2 COP Sergeant. On October 26, 2019, he was promoted to Lieutenant. He is currently the Lieutenant of the Investigative Division. Another big round of applause. Uh, thank you for all coming out. Um, obviously, Clayton stole my thunder. Um, it's very ironic that uh, that uh, today being uh, January 28th, exactly 29 years ago today that I was uh, appointed as a police officer for the city of Aurora. Uh, I could not be more honored to represent the city and this department. And I get choked up, so I'm just telling you. Uh, but uh, serving the citizens of Aurora has been my greatest honor, and, it's, and I, I truly mean that. And uh, for the officers that are new, um, get ready because it goes by quickly. Uh, it really does. I would never guess that uh, I'd be standing here right now today, 29 years later, uh, as a lieutenant and uh, speaking in front of all of you. So uh, I greatly appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, hopefully I don't let anybody down. Um, I do my best. Um, one person I would like to acknowledge, or a couple people I'd like to acknowledge, um, Pat Rowlson is in here tonight. Uh, he's a retired lieutenant for the city of Aurora. 
he is the uh, sole inspiration on why I became a police officer. So he's my cousin, and uh, he's family. Um, I'd like to acknowledge all the people that I've worked with during the course of my career that I've learned so much from, um, the people that I rode in the squad car with, the people I worked cases with, the people that uh, gave me dating advice that never worked out. Uh, <laughs> all the people that I worked with over the course of my career, I listened to everything you guys said. Uh, I took from it, and uh, you guys made me a better person. Uh, I'd like to thank my parents that aren't here right now. They're in Florida right now, and they're probably enjoying a cocktail and looking at the, the Florida sun. Uh, but uh, I'll be there in February to see them. Um, I would not be the person today if it wasn't for them. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge a lot of people that are here tonight from the Kane County State's Attorney's Office who, have, who, who fight the right fight. And uh, they, uh, they are uh, really appreciated in my book. Um, I cherished our relationship that, uh, that I've, I've had with you guys over the years. Several of you are still with the State's Attorney's Office. Several of you have gone to be judges. And uh, I really did cherish our relationship, and I appreciate the time and effort that you guys put into me. So I, I, I really appreciate that. So thank you. Next, please give a round of applause to Lieutenant Lawrence Suttle, Jr. down to pin him. A brief bio, Lieutenant Suttle was sworn in as an Aurora police officer on May 30, 2000. He served as a patrol officer, a field training officer, a school resource officer, a member of the special response team, and a training officer. Larry was promoted to sergeant on November 8, 2008. As a sergeant, he was assigned to the patrol unit, booking unit, and training unit. On January 4, 2020, Larry was promoted to lieutenant and is currently the Area 1 lieutenant. Royal Police Department. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, thank the mayor, uh, the city council, the chief, and all the command staff that supported this decision. I look forward to uh, taking a greater responsibility in the leadership of this department. Um, I've had <laughs> great experience here. It's been over 20 years. I've been a, a police officer for over 24. Um, I couldn't have done it without the support of my family, which I've been, anyone who knows me knows I'm a family man. Uh, my four boys are here. They made it. Uh, three of them uh, drove back from Indianapolis today. Uh, my sister's here. My mom's here. And uh, my wife of almost 35 years is here. Uh, <laughs> choked up. I, I, I very much look at this as an honor and privilege to get promoted and to be where I am today. And I uh, look forward to doing the best I can to uh, provide a safe community for our, our citizens. Thank you. Before we get to the next one, it appears that there's quite a few people standing out in the hall. If some of you would like to come in and uh, stand at the far side of the room so you can uh, come and witness what you're, you're here to celebrate with. Next, please, join us in welcoming Sergeant Patrick Camardo. <coughs> Camardo was sworn in as a Royal Police Officer on September 18, 2006. He served as a patrol officer, a field training officer, and as an evidence tech in investigations. On October 26, 2019, Pat was promoted to sergeant, and he is currently assigned to the Neighborhood Policing Bureau as an Area 3 Second Shift Patrol Sergeant. Another big round of applause to our new sergeant. everyone for coming out. Um, it truly is an honor to have been selected to be a sergeant for the Aurora Police Department. Um, I just really want to thank all the supervisors, 
that I worked for over the years that helped push me in the right direction and provide good examples of the leaders I wanted to be when I eventually got promoted. And I also want to give a big shout out to my wife, Teresa, for putting up with all these crazy hours I work and for the five straight months I spent either at work or studying for this test. So <laughs> somehow she can strangle me. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone that's a police officer or that's uh, had some type of uh, employee number or knows how precious you cherish it. Uh, Pat has always been um, what I would sit, consider my project uh, from the time that, that he started. And I say that because Pat and I share badge number 301 as an officer. So I've always had uh, high expectations for him, and he's lived up to those. Welcome, Sergeant Robert Danielle. <laughs> Sergeant Danielle was sworn in as an Aurora Police Officer on April 1st, 2002. He served as a patrol officer, a field training officer, a detective in investigations, and as a traffic officer. On January 4th, 2020, Rob was promoted to Sergeant, and he is currently assigned to the Neighborhood Policing Bureau as an Area 2 Third Shift Patrol Sergeant. Another round of applause for Sergeant Robert. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, City Council, Mayor of Aurora, uh, Command Staff of the Police Department, uh, thank you for trusting in me and bestowing this uh, position on me, believing in me, and I uh, take the responsibility of leadership in this police department very seriously. I uh, like to mold all our young police officers, the ones that sit here tonight, the ones that we all work with every day, uh, make them a better police officer and hopefully so that they're standing here uh, being promoted sometime in the future as well. Um, I'd like to thank uh, someone who's not here tonight, uh, Captain Adam Kowalski, uh, a platoon leader of mine in the Army. He taught me a lot about leadership, good lessons, bad lessons. Um, I cherish his lessons and everything that he's taught me, uh, especially on our deployment that we had uh, about a year ago. Um, it means a lot to me what he taught me and how he mentored me. Uh, I'd also like to thank my parents who are sitting here as well. You made me who I am today. Thank you very much. My brother, my son, who's here, my daughter who's at college right now, thank you for putting up with all this shift work and everything and missing all your school events because of the shift work as well. And obviously my wife, Nikki. You're my rock. You deserve this promotion just as much as I do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shots. Please come back down. If they come down, one more round of applause. Lieutenant Robert Wallace, Lieutenant Lawrence Soto, Sergeant Patrick Camardo, and Sergeant Robert Wallace. members of the Aurora Police Department, I would like to commend you on your decision to commit to a life of service. I would like to further commend you on joining the best police department in the state and one of the finest in the nation. As a department, we will commit to ensuring that you receive the most up-to-date training and equipment. There will be times in your career that you will experience some incredible highs, and there will also be times when you may suffer some personal lows. From time to time, I challenge you to always remember this day, the feeling that you have right now, and the look of admiration of those around you. I'll call them down. They're going to take the oath collectively. We're asking them to come down and stand 
closer to the deputy chief as we acknowledge each one. Our first officer, Officer William Baker, badge number 284. Illinois. He grew up in Oswego and graduated from Oswego East High School. He attended Aurora University and graduated with a Bachelor's of Criminal Justice. Our next officer, Officer David Emmerich, Batch number 297. <laughs> he was born in Arlington Heights, Illinois. He grew up in Bartlett and graduated from Bartlett High School. He attended Harper College, Elgin Community College, and graduated from Illinois State University with a Bachelor's of Criminal Justice. He was previously employed for the Crystal Lake Police Department since March 2014. Our next officer, Officer William King III, badge number 304. <laughs> William was born right here in Aurora. He grew up in Sugar Grove and graduated from Kalen High School. He graduated from the University of Wisconsin with a Bachelor's in Political Science and Legal Studies. He also received his EMT B certificate from Wabonzi Community College. Our next officer, Officer Taylor Reese, badge number 340. <laughs> she was born in Hazelcrest, Illinois. She grew up in the Yorkville, Montgomery area and graduated from Yorkville High School. She took classes at Wabonzi Community College in criminal justice. Next, Officer Lisa Rodriguez, badge number 238. <laughs> Lisa was born and grew up in Aurora. She graduated from Rosary High School, enlisted in the Marine Corps from 2005 to 2010. She continued her education at St. Leo University and graduated with a bachelor's in psychology. She received a certificate in cosmetology from Miller Mock College. She has two children. Next officer, badge number 109, Officer Daniel Vargas. <laughs> and he was born and raised in Elgin. He graduated from Larkin High School and attended Elgin Community College while pursuing a degree in criminal justice. Next, badge number 321, Officer Jimarez Velasquez. Plainfield and graduated from Plainfield South High School. Attended Juliet Junior College and Lewis University, graduated with a bachelor's in forensic criminal investigations. Badge number 272, Officer Brandon Wada. <laughs> raised in Yorkville and was homeschooled, graduated from Wabonzi Community College with an associate's degree in criminal justice. Last, certainly not least, badge number 318, Officer Quinn Willis. <laughs> Quinn grew up in Chicago in Hanover Park, graduated from Lake Park High School. He enlisted in the Army for four years, raising to the rank of Sergeant. He is in the Army Reserves, he attended Aurora University with a wife and a daughter, and previously worked as a court detention technician for APD since June 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, the new officers of the Aurora Police Department. They join the ranks of the finest force in the country. Continue to keep us a more proud and more strong. Representing the men and women of the Aurora Police Department. When our officers when they're first hired, uh, we have to swear them in as a requirement for them to uh, actually go to the academy and start the training process. So that day when we swear them in, they receive the oath of office. Uh, once they come back, we like to administer what's considered the oath of honor. That's a, a note for them to continue to understand and always remember exactly why they took the job. At this point, uh, Commander Cross is going to deliver the oath of honor to our newest officers.
individually come to sign their oaths, take photos. One more big round of applause for our new officers. Someone can come over and in those directions and we'll do individual photos. We'll turn the meeting back to you, Women Seville. <laughs> I just want to say how honored we are, uh, those members of the Aurora Police Department, to have chosen the profession that you did, uh, to take the oath and to live it every day to serve and protect our community, especially in light of what happened a year ago. We honor you for your presence and all the work that you do day in and day out, and the sacrifices that your family makes as well with you. So thank you very much. So as the uh, officers are signing their oath, um, those of you that want to leave, uh, you're invited to do so, uh, unless you want to stay and, and uh, watch the illustrious city council unfold for the rest of the evening, it's your choice. But we'll give you a few minutes uh, to leave if that's your choice.
Uh, thank you for your patience. We will now resume the City Council meeting. Madam Clerk, do we have any members of the public wishing to offer a public comment? We do. Pursuant to the Open Meetings Act, all persons shall be permitted an opportunity to address public officials under the rules established and recorded by the Council. Under our rules, any person may address the City Council for up to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes allotted for all public comment. No person other than the timekeeper or the chair for the purpose of maintaining order may interrupt a person recognized for public comment during his or her comments. Members of the City Council shall not engage with nor respond to a speaker during the time set aside for public comment. Staff is directed to follow up with members of the public with respect to any concerns raised during public comment within the scope of the City's authority following the adjournment of this meeting. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what the city clerk said for all of you speakers. Just so you know, we have 16 speakers. You are entitled to three, up to three minutes to speak. However, if you take all the three minutes, then some of the people that are signed up after you will not be able to speak because we only allow 30 minutes to speak. So if you want to keep that in mind, I'm sure the other people on the list would appreciate it. So with that, will Madam Clerk read? The name of the first person to offer public comments this evening. Arlisha Dockery. Hello, good, good evening, uh, City Council. Um, I'm here today to address the issues regarding our at risk and inner youth. Uh, the Unity Group acts early in December to meet in discussion of the epidemic that plagues our community. We were told December 7th that there would be a meeting to address our concerns. After no response, we attended the December 15th meeting to speak on these issues. We were never heard. So now we are here today. We feel there is a lack of commitment um, from our city officials to address the true violence in our communities. Our students of colors are not sharing in the economic prosperity in Aurora. We proposed solutions we thought would improve the quality of life, the crimes, and the policies. Now we understand there is a plan in place. 
where we hadn't been invited to sit at the table. Our youth are truly in need. We know because we're out there daily in the trenches with them. We have met with entities to help with job placement, GED programs, addiction counseling, behavioral health, etc. Now is the time that you hear us. We can no longer put a bandage on the problem, nor can we keep building in inner circles and throwing scraps at the outer circles. Our motto, our commitment, our orientation is around hope. We believe that hopelessness is the enemy of justice and hopelessness exists where justice fails. We can do more together than we could separately. Again, we are all one Aurora. Let's close the gap. Can you help us? Thank you so much. Will the clerk please call the next person? Angela Collier. <coughs> City Council, um, Mayor Irvin is absent from the under the weather. I was in ICU about a week ago, so my voice is a little low. But I want to address a couple of things. My first apartment was 306 East New York Street, and when I had my third child, they moved me down to 509 East New York Street, where I was right across the street from Wayside. In the process, one of the men chased me in the building one night when I was coming home from Bible class. I called Wayside to find out who this man was because I had seen him in the store because I shopped there often. And then when I moved, I, I gave him my subsidy. I t uh, Bill Peskin at the time was my landlord and it was a HUD unit. So they told me if I moved out of this unit, I would lose my subsidy. So I had five children under the age of 16 years old. I didn't know who this man was. So I moved, and when I moved, I moved out in Tall Oaks in the back where John Byrus was, he, be, he bought the property. But this man showed up at my place. I have no idea how he found me. But I called Wayside, and I wanted to speak to one of the directors. And they told me, ma'am, this man is no longer with us. He committed suicide. I was never able to get that man's name. I no longer have seen him again after that, so I don't know. And I Googled it, I could not find who this person was. Then in 1998, I was on the Section 8 program. My landlord was Gregory Sweezer. They were running an international child porn ring here in Aurora. The Aurora Police Department failed me. I had 10 false alarms where I had to move my family out of the city of Aurora to Joliet. I'm here tonight to tell you these people do not have criminal backgrounds when they sign up for these children, these programs. You have to do better because there is no way in the world I should have been running with my children for over 15 years to get them to have them in a safe home. Gregory Sweezer was indicted and charged and served 12 years in prison. He had no charge. He drove for he worked for the Royal Police. I mean, the Royal um, um, Postal Service. I did a background check on him and I called FBI to run it back on him. So I just want city council to do better tonight to protect our children. I started Save Our Youth over 20 something years ago and all the heart, heartburn you see, no, she seen me at the park trying to convince everyone to help and save our children. These single women, they don't have no idea what to do. And I'm gonna tell you what they did to me in my twenties, they can't do now. I'm almost 55 years old. I'm much wiser now. So we have to do better. I applaud you for what you did in that area. It was horrible over there. The park is much better. But we had so many drunk men and women hanging out around the building. And I'm fed up with what I see in our community. We have to do better. I have grandchildren now. And I want to live to see my grandchildren grow up. So I'm going to do everything I can. Thank you. Thank you. Will the clerk please, please call the, read the next member who wants to sign up and speak? Thomas Mahalik. <coughs> Good evening, council members. Uh, what a nice way to start my evening, being a part of that police swearing promotion. 
things and all that. I was here to do that. I'm here to follow up on the special use permit at 1415 Corporate Boulevard. I know what there was discussion at the last meeting we were talking about parking, but I still oppose that site as a site for a special use permit for a cannabis dispensary because of my business that runs in it. The lack of parking, which we've agreed 15 parking spots isn't enough to run the business. We have asked the uh, petitioner to see if they can get off-site parking. One of the restrictions that's going to come in if there's off-site parking, there's no pedestrian access to this site from the north. Corporate Boulevard comes straight off Farnsworth Avenue. It's a straight run through to the mall, so there's nowhere for people to come from the north to walk there. There's no sidewalks that come from the south on Farnsworth Avenue. So even if there is remote parking, it's not going to be a good solution. One of the items that was floated was potentially Aldi's corporate headquarters. If you walked from Aldi's to the office, it'd be 0.6 miles. You'd have to go north on Farnsworth Avenue on the west side of the street, come across at a stoplight and walk south. There's no crosswalk on, 14, on Corporate Boulevard to get there. There's actually no sidewalks for 80% of that walkway. So there really is no pedestrian access to the site. It was duly noted in the Zoning Commission's meeting, and they say that there is limited pedestrian access. There's 15 parking spots at the site. If someone has to park remotely, they're going to have to shuttle them in. We'll have to see what the solution is from the petitioner, but I think for the lack of the size of that site for the type of facilities going in there, it's not your standard retail facility. North Aurora is still having major problems. You may hear later from other people of, of the issues that they have there. But it was stated last week that North Aurora only has six parking spaces. I went there in the last week. They have nine signed parking spaces in the front of the building with their own name on it, Feral Life. And then they have additional parking in the back of the building of 40 to 50 parking spaces that they can use. They wait down there. They've had to put actually trash bins and actually porta potties out there to handle the people that are in line. So if you go to that facility, that's what you'll see in the back of it, okay? Um, and I also have talked about the ability of that site with me located there to comply with the um, State Cannabis Act. Some of it is moving this, uh, the materials in and out of the facility. The Cannabis Act strictly states you need to have a private access or approval from the state to move it in. It's going to go through the lobby of where my people come in the building. So I don't know what their response to that is, but also they can't have a premise with people that are under 21 years of age. Many of the applicants that come in on my building bring their families and they're working if they're 18 years of greater. So it wasn't contemplated being co-located in a building where you would have people like that. I appreciate the help you've given me on ventilation systems. Parking is not designated at that site. There's no way I can enforce my parking rights without you making a condition to designate it and give me uh, specific parking spaces to protect it because they're going to have to undo it. That's my time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Will the Madam Clerk please read the next name? Ray Hinch. <clears throat> Good evening, I'm Reverend Ray Hinge, Chaplain and Lieutenant Colonel of the United States Air Force, retired, been a volunteer at Wayside Cross uh, for the past six years on the Master's Test Program. I would like to encourage Mary Ir Mayor Irvin and the Alderman to look into your hearts, your hearts. King Solomon tells us in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Our Lord Jesus tells us in Luke 6.45, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart, end quote. In previous city council meetings, there have been six to eight persons that have um, spoken with personal knowledge, involvement, and support of the ministry of Wayside Cross. They've spoken of the transformed lives of the Master's Touch residents, including registered sex offenders, the safety and security of their Wayside Cross facility, and the 92 years that Wayside Cross has partnered with the city of Aurora, I do not recall one person that has showed up to support your decision to change the status of a public park into a children's playground. As a former member of the United States Army, Mayor Irvin and all military veterans quickly learned the acronym RHIP, rank has its privileges. After 24 years of active duty, and uh, that included five years as a Marine Corps helicopter pilot and 19 years as an Air Force chaplain, I prefer the acronym RHIR, rank has its responsibility. In, our, in Matthew 20, our Lord Jesus states, You know the rulers in this world lord it over their people. Officials flaunt their authority over those under them, but among you it will be different. 
Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life a ransom for many. On the mayor's website, Irvin for Mayor of Aurora, the mayor quotes three inspiring individuals. You've heard this before tonight. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, where he stands, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. The mayor is also inspired when he quotes Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. I, have, I will never forget the real world consequences of my decisions on individuals, businesses, and government. The third quote on the mayor's website is, let us not seek the Republican, Republican answer or the Democratic answer, but the right answer, President John F. Kennedy. And so this evening, Mayor Irvin and the City Council, look into your hearts in the challenge and controversy of the decision to remove the RSOs from Wayside Cross, in the spirit of President Kennedy and Justice Sotomayor, look at the real world consequences of your decisions on the RSOs and do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please read the name of the next person on the list. Dale Hammond. Honorable Mayor, City Council, and this room of neighbors. I'm Pastor Dale Hammond, retired. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with you. We are here tonight in this brief time to focus our attention on the present and future of 18 or 19 men at Wayside who have been redeemed from their hard past and whose lives have been fundamentally and demonstrably have changed for their good and for the betterment of our society. However, we are here not just for those 18 or 19 and their families, but also for many, many individual lives and unknown numbers of family units of our society in the future that will need, need what these men have received at Wayside. These men have been regenerated, reborn in their minds by no longer doing those things that destroy the mind. These men have been regenerated, reborn in their bodies by no longer doing things that destroy the body. These men have been regenerated, reborn in their spirits. These men have been regenerated, reborn in their souls. These men's lives have been radically changed for the better. They have caused no trouble in the many years they have been at Wayside. These men and a multitude of other men, women, children, and families are the very reason Wayside was founded 92 years ago. Restoration. Redemption. Many of them have productive jobs and some are now on staff at Wayside and are helping others to recover from their hard pasts, to become productive citizens in the Aurora area and beyond. If you are a parent or a grandparent, you of course naturally love your children and grandchildren. You want the best for them. They all do or have done things in their past which have disappointed you or given you cause for concern. As your parents, as young parents and young grandparents, we naturally wonder who they will be when they grow up. The parents and the grandparents of these men when they were growing up as children had the same love and dreams for their children and grandchildren as you have for your families. I hope you don't have, but if you do have a family member or friend who made some wrong choices in the past, would you not want them to reach out for help and get it? I know you would want that for them. This is exactly what these men did in their deep, deep need. They reached out for help and recovery and thank God, thank God, they found it at Wayside. With all respect that is due this city governmental body, we urge you, we plead with you to not throw these men out of Wayside. Wayside is exactly where they need to be to receive the help they need and so want. Please, please do not turn these men away. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please read the name of the next person on the list. James Jensen. <laughs> Your 
Good evening, council members. Um, I've been a resident of Aurora for more than 50 years, and I run a business within several hundred feet of the North Aurora marijuana dispensary. I'd like to uh, give you a few comments uh, looking at it from both perspectives. As a resident of Aurora, I was sorely disappointed in your recent vote to approve uh, recreational licenses. I find it a poor and unstable way to fund government, and I think your experience with riverboat gambling bears that out. As a matter of public policy, to put more impaired drivers on the road doesn't make sense to me at all. As a business owner, I can only say this. I can't think of a worse business neighbor that North Aurora could have foisted on me. Their clientele walks where they want to walk. They trespass where they want to trespass. They throw their garbage where they want to throw it. And most egregiously, they park wherever the heck they want to park. I'm speaking of parking, 15 spots, give me a break, please. Once this potential dispensary opens and put their staff and their security in the parking lot, where are the customers going to park? Do you have an answer for that? Where are the customers going to park? And how many cars are going to come through this locale per day? Has your staff worked up that number? If you don't have that number, I don't know how you vote on this. It's not complicated math. You know what your estimate of tax revenue is. You know what your tax rate is. You know what the other 10 states that have approved legal pot, you know what the average price, average purchase per individual is, you could work out, work up that number. I'm not going to do it for you, but it's out there. And it's hundreds of cars a day in a parking lot that has no excess capacity at all. If I came before your plan commission with any type of special use permit for a high volume retail business under these circumstances, other than a pot shop, no parking, busy street, no turn lanes, no traffic control devices, no pedestrian access, I'd be laughed out of the room and all of you know that would happen. This should be denied. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person on the list? John Bell. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, some of you know uh, I'm a pastor. Um, I wanted to speak about uh, Wayside. Um, I, uh, first of all, appreciate all that you are doing. Um, and I'm, uh, I don't have any connection to Wayside. I don't know the pastors who are here before me. Um, I don't know any of the leadership of Wayside. Um, I haven't been a part of any city conversations about, about this. Um, and uh, I certainly appreciate the issue of security. I have three boys uh, and their security is important to me. Um, I, um, I, I do know that people can change. Uh, people can get better when they're surrounded by a community that provides them support and resources. Um, I think whether that's a city or an institution, a church, school, uh, even families that lean into a problem, uh, help people who are struggling, get them the resources that they need, they get better. Um, in order to do that requires collaboration. Um, and I am sure there's probably lots of blame uh, to go around, lots of finger pointing, and I'm sure everybody has said something or done something that's made this process difficult, and I don't know all the ins and outs of it just from what I've read in the paper, uh, but I would uh, encourage both sides uh, to find a way to get to the table, to sit down and to try to work out a solution that everybody can agree to, uh, that everybody wins on, that uh, has all of the parties that have a stake in this uh, to sit down and come up with an arrangement. Um, if it's too late for this, I understand there's legalities to this. I know it's in court. I know the judge is about to rule on it. Um, I guess I would just say moving forward, my hope is, is that when the city uh, bumps up into an organization that it's having an issue with, uh, that we improve the process of finding a win-win solu uh, solution for both sides uh, so that everybody can get to an agreement at the table um, I think, um, you know, I think that given the polarization that's going on in our community that we're bombarded with all the time now, uh, that to be able to set an example for the people of Aurora of what it's like to come to a table, sit down, figure out how to move forward together in creative ways, I think that those opportunities, in my experience, are much better ideas of moving forward uh, than if a judge decides. Um, and I think it also sets an example for the surrounding communities uh, that uh, the leadership of Aurora has found a way to do this, that sets an example. And I think that that makes a community great. And I think 
you know, Aurora is a great city and being able to uh, come to the table and find a way forward, both sides willing to do that, uh, will make uh, Aurora a great city. So thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person signed up to speak? Marianne Vincent. Good evening, thank you for this time. I, I'm gonna try and make this fast. I have four questions. If this city council really cares about protecting the children of Aurora, then why did this city council reduce the number of feet from 500 to 100? between any school in Aurora and an establishment that sells alcohol. Then why did the greed of tax revenue win over the common sense of not allowing recreational marijuana in our city? As I explained several months ago before the vote, every dollar gained in tax revenue will cost the city $4.50. This is proven from other states that legalized recreational marijuana four or five years ago. This is from work hours lost, extra police hours, accidents, etc. Uh, we want to protect the children of the city, then why not closely monitor the RSOs living who knows where, rather than the men who have voluntarily submitted to a structured program, residential program at Wayside with proven results for over 92 years then why not build the new playground at the corner of South Lincoln and East Benton, the former Masonic lot? Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person offering public comment? Jeff Volkman. <laughs> Council. Uh, I find it fine, funny that uh, Officer Kim Groon retires and you got to hire nine officers to replace her. A little, a little humor. Um, I, I work at uh, 161 South Lincoln Way, which is where the uh, cannabis dispensary is right now in North Aurora. I just want to tell you, it's just it's a nightmare every day. Uh, they said that uh, over a period of time, the lines would, dis, would uh, diminish and uh, everything would get better, and it's not. It's, uh, it, I left at five o'clock today, four weeks into it. Uh, the line was out the door. Our facility holds hundreds of people inside that are lined up and uh, snaked around an indoor facility, and it's still lined up outside, past the trash, past the dumpsters, past the porta potties. Uh, you can't go out for lunch, you can't run an errand, you come back, and the parking lot is full. Um, it's like a rock concert or a new Apple store that comes, opens up. I mean, they, you open up at 4 o'clock, but they're there, too. Uh, they planned on two police officers at the beginning to try and hold uh, things down. They have, like, eight now. I mean, it's just the expenses are incredible. It's a, it's a miserable place to go to work. I'm unhappy about it. And uh, if you put two pounds of sugar in a one-pound bag like you are planning on with uh, – uh, 14, 15 corporate, it's just not going to work, really. It's, it's a miserable, and uh, please use some common sense, not just dollars, and uh, don't, don't allow the dispensary there. Do it right the first time. Give them a place to go. I, I'm not against it. I don't use it. I'm shocked at how many people do use it. It's, a, it's amazing, but um, get it right and give them a place to go where it's, safety is for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person offering public comment? David Wood. Good evening. My name is David Wood, and I have the privilege of being a pastor at Village Bible Church here in Aurora. Thank you for this opportunity to share a little bit of uh, my thoughts and my heart in regard to uh, supporting Wayside Cross Ministries and the men who have been recently facing threats of eviction. As a fellow man, uh, made in the image of God, as a father of three beautiful young children, and a pastor within the community, uh, I ask you and others involved to allow these men to remain living and growing at Wayside Cross for the following five reasons. Number one, the men have made a commitment to grow and change. Living and operating within the discipline structure and guidelines of the Master's Touch program is not an easy task. I applaud the men at Wayside for their diligence and hard work in taking the steps required for transformation, and I want to see these men continue to grow. Number two, 
Our community is stronger with opportunities for all to be transformed. One of the unique things about is Aurora is that all are welcome, not only in things like cuisine choices or the variety of uh, entertainment opportunities, but also in recognizing the opportunity to grow and change for the better. Eliminating this opportunity for men at Wayside moves our community backward in this endeavor. Number three, displacing these men won't make Aurora safer or more appealing. I've always been surprised by the argument that removing these men from the structure and support of Wayside would contribute to the safety of our community. Sending them off as islands to fend for themselves doesn't set anyone up for success. I don't believe that to be the case. Rather, I think encouraging these men to thrive within the context of a transformative community is a benefit for them, for the people of Aurora, and for the elected officials entrusted with the task of leading our city and our people well. Number four, we don't just want the city of Aurora and Wayside to care for these men, we are doing it too. Just a couple nights ago on Sunday, I enjoyed a time of dessert and fellowship with my friends, uh, my wife and my children and church family, as well as a friend from Wayside, Marcus, whom you'll hear, hear from next. We've had the pleasure of getting to know in our church. We prayed for him. Uh, we prayed for the men of Wayside, that they would be able to continue to experience the transformative work of Jesus at Wayside. There are risks involved, but we're willing to take those steps to walk arm in arm with them as we enjoy the grace of God together. Number five, I've visited McCartney Park many times with my young family and have never felt at risk or like I am putting my children in harm's way. I'd like to close with a passage from scripture, Psalm 107. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please read the name of the next person offering public comment. Marcus Sabo. Good evening. Thank you for hearing me tonight. My name is Marcus, and I have said every time here that we are scared and confused because of the situation at Wayside. Where does our confusion come from? From statements made by government officials. The city attorney has stated to us that the city is not contemplating any action akin to eviction, yet the city gives us letters telling us they think we are in violation of law, so suggest we move, which sounds like an eviction to me. A court order agreed to by the city said they would not communicate with the state's attorney on this matter. And then the city council last month had said that the city had been talking to the state's attorney. The state's attorney himself has said that each case would be looked at individually. And in an interview, he said that we've got to find a way to solve this. But then he, like you, has not wanted to meet with us to resolve this. Why the confusion? Why the fear? Why the subterfuge? Here's what I know. I know that Wayside and McCarty Park have not changed where they're located since this law was enacted decades ago. I know that research has shown that residency restriction laws such as this do more harm than good for the community. I know that numerous supporters have been here at these meetings and at court hearings and have written to you saying they do not support the city's position. Are you listening to the voices of the people who elected you to office or are you giving in to an unfounded fear? I know that it is within the discretion of the local authority to not apply this law when it can be clearly shown it does not increase public safety in any way such as in this particular situation. Wayside is exactly where these men need to be to help themselves, their families, and most importantly, to keep Aurora safer for everyone. Yes, all of us made very great mistakes in the past, but we have all paid our legal debt to society and been released back into the world to live life again. We have learned to repent and to confess our sins to God. We just want to continue to repair our lives and to live by the principles laid out by our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are men who have come to Wayside for the support it has given us to start our lives over. We have received teaching, mentoring, stability, and a hope for the future. I know you may not like us personally, and that is okay, but we are people with names. We are citizens of Aurora, and we are people with lives that do matter. Would not the city be stronger by including people who have made mistakes in the past and then are working very hard to repair the damage done and coming out stronger on the other side? This really is too great a city to miss that opportunity. You are too strong leaders to not see the reward this can bring to the City of Lights. And it is not too late to find a solution that benefits everyone in Aurora. For these specific people living in this one place at this time, Wayside is the very best place for them and for the entire City of Aurora. Thank you. 
Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person to talk to the comment? Roger Vernon. My name is Roger Vernon, 2625 Ginger Woods Drive, and I will uh, skip parts of my uh, talk. You've all got copies of it. Uh, previous speakers have talked about the parking issues at the uh, <coughs> distribution facility. One of the items that has not been touched on is the traffic on Farnsworth. Farnsworth Avenue currently is at capacity. This site is uh, right there at the exit ramp to I-88. And if any of you remember when the mall opened up, uh, they did not plan correctly for the traffic. Traffic backed up on I-88, several accidents were uh, uh, occurred and the uh, Tolley Commission went and put in a, an additional exit uh, lane trying to alleviate the problem. With this right there at the exit ramp, it would not take any very little increase in, in traffic to cause a similar problem. I agree that the city should not take sides on a purely business matter, but neither should they approve a resolution that gives one business significant advantages over another. Approving a special site permit exasperates an already bad situation is unthinkable. I encourage the council to vote no on resolution 19-11045 until the infrastructure can be improved to handle the vehicle, pedestrian, and parking situations. Thank you. On a side note, I also support the uh, Wayside uh, to keep those uh, individuals at Wayside, even though I have not uh, researched the situation. I know that the people in my neighborhood uh, support them staying at Wayside. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, will you please read the name of the next person? <coughs> You will have 45 minutes or 45 <laughs> seconds to speak. Steve Madowick. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm the uh, chaplain, senior chaplain of Wayside Cross Ministries. I head up the jail and prison ministry. I'm responsible for bringing men and women in from jail and prison. Been doing it the last four years, been a volunteer there for the last 15 years. And I'll tell you this, that we're a parole center here in, Wesa, in, in Aurora. And uh, they trust us. Uh, the reason is, is the, state, the state's rate of recidivism, men and women that are going back to jail and prison after three years is 70%. The rate of recidivism for Wayside graduates going back to prison is less than 10%. We need to be able to have men and work with men in life transformation. Thank you for your time. That concludes the public comment section of our meeting this evening. Uh, the next item would be the mayoral appointments. Madam Clerk, will you please read the resolution? Item 19-1149, a resolution appointing Kelvin Bean and Sandra Harrison to the Aurora African American Heritage Advisory Board. It's been moved by Alderman Harper and seconded by Alderman Jenkins. Uh, we have um, we have a presentation or no? Okay. Yeah. Uh, are they uh, Kelvin? Uh, would you like to stand? Will you be presenting them their awards right here? First? Okay. Do you want to do that before the vote or afterwards? After the vote? After the vote, okay. probably better. So will the clerk, um, any discussion on the resolution? Or will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Harburn? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Alderman Lachi, yes. Alderman Jenkins. Yes. 11 A's. Motion carries. The resolution is approved. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Harrison, step Harrison. up. Okay.
Okay, that will bring us to the consent agenda. Will the clerk now read the consent agenda uh, in full? 19-1154, resolution authorizing the purchase of one 2020 wheeled coach Ford F550 4x4 diesel type 1 ambulance from Fire Service Incorporated St. John, Indiana in the amount of $292,826 for the Aurora Fire Department. 19-1177, a resolution approving the release of a request for proposals for an availability and disparity study on behalf of the City of Aurora. 19-1178, a resolution to approve the ratification for payment and expenses to Patterson Veterinary Supply Incorporated for various medications and vaccines for the animals in the care of animal control, animal care and control not to exceed $35,100. 19-1179, a resolution authorizing the modification of an agreement between the City, Aurora Public Library, and School District 129 pertaining to the responsibilities of the library and district with respect to the real property constituting Washington Middle School and the West Branch of the Aurora Public Library. 20-0004, a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding between the City of Aurora through the Aurora Police Department and Family Service Association of Greater Elgin Area regarding a police social worker employed by FSA to provide social work services to residents of the City of Aurora. 20-0011, an ordinance designating the City of Aurora's 75th Street and Ogden Avenue Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area. 20-0012, an ordinance approving the City of Aurora's 75th Street and Ogden Avenue Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area Redevelopment Plan and Project. 20-0013, an ordinance adopting the City of Aurora's 75th Street and Ogden Avenue Tax Increment Financing District. 20-0019, an ordinance designating the City of Aurora's Galena and Broadway Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area. 20-0020, an ordinance approving the City of Aurora's Galena and Broadway Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area Redevelopment Plan and Project. 20-0021, an ordinance adopting the City of Aurora's Galena and Broadway Tax Increment Financing District. 20-0022, an ordinance designating the City of Aurora's River and Benton Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area. 20-0023, an ordinance approving the City of Aurora's River and Benton Tax Increment Financing District Redevelopment Project Area Redevelopment Plan and Project. 20-0024, an ordinance adopting the City of Aurora's River and Benton Tax Increment Financing District. 20-0027, a resolution authorizing a redevelopment agreement with Stolp Island Social Restaurant at 5 East Galena Boulevard, providing $200,000 for capital build out of the restaurant. Second. Most been made by Alderman Hartburn, second by Alderman Garza. Uh, are there any uh, items on the agenda uh, that um, people want to take off the uh, agenda? Any discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Renau? <clears throat> yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hart Burns? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopshi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yeah. 11 A's. The consent agenda is approved. Will the clerk please um, read the first item under unfinished business? 19-1104, an ordinance granting a special use permit for a cannabis dispensing facility 2115 use on the property located at 1415 Corporate Boulevard. Is there a motion? I think we need to place it on the, on the floor to speak about it. Motion been made by Alderman Franco. Is there a second? Second by Alderman Jenkins. I think we have a presentation by state staff then. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an update. Um, I know that there was a number of items that were brought uh, up at uh, Committee of the Whole last week, and I just wanted to point out that in your packets, the uh, petitioner did provide us with an off-site uh, parking agreement with Gaslight Manor um, for 30 parking spaces. Um, also, they provided us with a parking operational procedure plan, um, both, again, which is, are in your packets. Um, the petitioner is here tonight to answer any of those questions that you may have about those documents. So. I'll turn it over to yeah, Alderman Franco. Uh, 
I'll start that again. So in here it says the proposed site has 30 parking spots available for new med. It was our understanding that you had 15 spots. So where does that 30 come right. from? Clarify that. There's 15 spots on the site at 1450. We have a lease signed with Gaslight Manor for an additional 30 spots, which we will shuttle people from there over to the 1415 facility. We will post that on our website. We will have a schedule and we will have that all established so that we can shuttle the customers and we will also park uh, all of the employees there to begin with so we're not eating up the 15 lots that is on site. So there's 15 on site, another 30 that we have a signed lease on with the availability to expand that if we need to. And Mr. Hughes, could you expound more upon the appointment only process? You're going, How are you going to implement you're, that? You're going to test me a little bit on that because that's Bob Fitzsimmons' uh, end of the business. But he does have a very significant uh, setup reservation system where you have to have a reservation time for a texting uh, setup that he arranges, which is part of his uh, package with the website, so there, so you don't see the influx that is being seen very candidly we acknowledge in North Aurora. We feel there will be much more of an even flow here. We know that this is a work in process which we are willing to do and I even talked with, with staff about after we're open let's sit down after six months and make sure this is all working the way everybody envisioned it to be working. But we will have a very significant online registration system where people have to make an appointment and if they show up without one they're given a time when they can come back and visit again. And again, every, and one other thing we, we did do, which we worked with staff today on, is we're putting a public sidewalk from, on Church Road, from the entrance to the gaslight parking, up to Builder, up to Builder. Then there's a sidewalk that exists there. Well, there's a sidewalk that exists there that comes over to Farnsworth and there's a lit <coughs> intersection there with a crosswalk. They can cross, come down to the site, and there's a couple of spots where there is some public walk missing, and we will supply and put that in with the city for the agreement I worked out with staff today. So we, we, tried, to, we tried to address the parking, <coughs> which was the big consideration last week or two weeks ago when we were in. Yeah, and, and we appreciate that. Thank you. So, can you explain that again? Because I did walk it, and the, from the site, you would have to cross the corporate boulevard, go north on uh, Farnsworth, go west on Bilter, go down Church. And right now, there's no. When you go on, on the west side of Church, you'd have to. There's no uh, between the sidewalk that's there. There's grass. You'd have to walk across grass and then cross Church. I believe we've got something here that yeah. we can show you. So while, while you're pulling that up, I uh, I have reservations. Um, a lot of calls and emails from people, even though it's not my ward, it's 500 yards from my ward, and I drive up and down there, and a lot of people in my ward use Farnsworth. The car wash is a problem because when it's busy, we have police out there directing traffic occasionally. Um, I've seen the site in North Aurora, um, and it's still crazy busy a month later. I drove up to uh, St. Charles Sunday and spoke to a Jason owner of the business up there to uh, Ben Life and he said it just eats up all the parking. Um, and it, it, you know, I just, I just think it's really 15 spaces is not gonna be enough with, and unfortunately, like if it was on the pad of Walmart or down on Farnsworth and Shepherd, somewhere else where there's a large parking lot, but I think it's gonna be crazy busy and I think it's gonna really affect um, manpower's business and I don't think it's fair to him um, so I mean I really do appreciate the parking but and I know you're saying you're you know you're gonna text for an appointment if you're pulling off to go to the outlet mall and you see a marijuana store I mean I, I can't imagine they're not gonna just pull in there and then to pull out it, it's just you know if you if you were close to the outlet mall and you could use parking but you got a long way I mean I looked at it today you got two or three football fields to get to the outlet mall parking lot which I'm sure they don't want if you made a deal with the city across the street where we had those hotels, that would be a better, smarter thing to me because then there's a lighted corporate you could just cross. So I don't know if that's a possibility, but that would make a lot more sense to me. We had that conversation very candidly, and the consensus was 
we would the city would prefer it be done on a private property rather than on a city owned parcel. Very can I'm being very candid. I'm very candid. So we know there are going to be some growing pains with this. I'm not going to sit here and say this is going to be uh, perfectly run the first day, but we are committed to make this thing work on a system and on a schedule where we will not see um, we will not see the upheaval that's taking place in North Aurora. I still maintain once there are a couple more dispenser dispensaries in the area, you're going to see a decrease in that traffic and you're going to see much more of a leveling off when this is handled and will be handled in a in form and fashion that we can all be comfortable with and, and live with. And I, I maintain that. <coughs> Alderman Vaughn. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, on your documents you submitted, you stated that the hours, your planned hours are from 10 to 5. Is that still the case? No, I believe they were from till 9. No, the original was from 10 to 5. And again, I would have to go back and see what the original. Mr. Fitzsimmons couldn't be here tonight, so I'm kind of taking the, uh, the run with it. And, you and believe again, the hours what, are from 10 to 9? I guess, I guess what I would ask is, what, what's the city looking for? I mean, I just read what okay. went in front of the planning commission. Okay. It said 10 to 5. Okay. And there was a discussion about that. Okay. Um, well, if we're talking about hours, I would think that the later you open, the better it would be for parking because you spread that time period out over a number more hours as opposed to condensing it and then having too many people that come in a short window. I would think that would probably be better. And I know via ordinance you could stay open as late as 9 o'clock. So that, right. it appears that would be the way to go. Absolutely. So you could spread them out throughout the day Absolutely. as opposed to a smaller five, That's six hour window. Right. And very candidly, Manpower is closed basically at 5 o'clock. And they're not open per se on the weekends. So that would give a little breathing room, if you will. But again, we've got the shuttles, the shuttle concept set up. We will make that part of the package, part of the registration for the customer registration. It will be published, it will be set up so that that can be, um, we think, the solution to the parking problem. We, we, I'm not going to sit here and say I understand 15 spots is enough. It's not. I get that. I'm not about to sit here and say that works. We, we figured we had to go outside the box and that's why we approached the gentleman um, who actually did this some years back when the outlet mall, I believe, first opened up. He used to have employee parking there, and he used to shuttle, shuttle them over uh, at that time. So there's a precedent to this. We will establish the public sidewalk system, which will give uh, ability to do that. And I would think during summer months, you're going to have some people that would be walking. Then. It's a half mile, maybe. That's, that's not a tough walk. So I would think we would see that happening as well. It says in the staff report that you would be allowed to operate from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. Is that correct, Tracy? Alderman Franco? I'm sorry, Alderman Yamas was next. It's just a, a quick question. So we, we keep referring to the five, I'm sorry, the 15 parking spots. Right. They're on site, but total at, at the property, how many are there? 32. So are those just split then? Basically, Manpower has 56% of the, the, the floor plate space. We have 44, so that's how that's uh, divvied up, if you would, in the lease. So then after 5 o'clock with Manpower closed? We'd have to talk with Manpower, but I'm assuming if they're closed, they, they wouldn't have a problem, but we would certainly work with Manpower. We're, we want to be a good neighbor here. We understand this is a little out of the norm, but we would certainly work with them on a basis that we can make work. We, talk, we talked about the, uh, the air conditioning system, the heating and vac, we have no problem with that. We're even looking into maybe taking a window out to the east, putting in a separate doorway there so we could have a sec second entrance there. You can do it in one entrance, but we're trying to, to work with everybody on this. We recognize that he needs to use that space for uh, some people as well. So we're trying to put this in a perspective that gives a level of comfort to everybody. Alderman Franco? So I think I re brought this up last time, and Alderman Yamas kind of uh, alluded to it. 
how are we going to distinguish that your users cannot park in, in uh, their parking spot um, manpowers? Right. hours? I mean, how are we going to, and, and, that, and it's good that uh, Yamas brought that up because after five o'clock, if that was permitted, signage is, I thought signage, new med parking only, yeah, man we, park parking only, but you wouldn't, if you got to use it after five o'clock, then that would put that to the kibosh because. Well, or you, again, if manpower's okay with that, if we could put between hours of X to Y, you, this is where you gotta park, after hours you can park here, again, we'd have to work with him, okay. uh, and would do so. Again, we're trying to be, we're trying to be a good neighbor. I know this is unsettling, a lot of ways to a lot of people, but we're trying to be a good neighbor and put a good put a, a, a good foot forward here and um, make this. I hate to say it because he's my brother-in-law, but he does run a first-class show. He does. It will not be what you're seeing in North Aurora Ferry Camp. Oh, Smith. 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 So when we saw you the last time, we left you with a task, and the task was to come back with us with a resolution for your parking. Correct. And you've done that. So I thank you for um, taking it on, for um, resolving that problem, and um, I'm ready to vote. Oh, Sorry, just before we take a vote, I do want to make a, a motion on adding the uh, requirement for the sidewalk as one of the contingencies for this ordinance in section seven. So I don't, I don't know if you want to uh, continue discussion on this first before I make that motion. That'd be better. Okay. Alderman Bob. Yeah. Uh, so another uh, issue that I was looking at, you came in under a social equity application. Correct. Can you explain to us how you're going to meet that those requirements? That is something that. Bob Fitzsimmons could answer all day long. I know he sent Alderman Jenkins some information on that. If Alderman Jenkins wants to enlighten us because that's outside, that's beyond my pay grade. I'm being very honest with you. <laughs> very honest with you. Okay. I'm, I'm the real estate guy. Okay, I'll be honest with you too. We're gonna vote tonight. Maybe he should be here. He couldn't be here. He's down in Springfield, and my apologies, but he's down in Springfield working on the license issue. My apologies. Alderman Jenkins. Uh, with regards to the social equity, um, he has said at our committee meeting as well as committee to hold, if, I, if I'm correct, that he would be employing social equity, any social equity act of applicants. Also, he would also look to, uh, and it's also it's in the law that the state passed that says that he can assist or be a mentor to any social equity applicant that is looking to open a cannabis uh, operation. That's, that's in the law. So he did state that he would be willing to do that and he wants to work with a, a number of different organizations through the city in order to make that happen. So from his standpoint, since he has a medical operation already, he can apply for a dispensary, which he has, but part of the law states that he has to work with any social equity applicant that is looking to either work for his operation or to assist them in opening up a uh, cannabis uh, operation. So specifically the law states that 51% of the employees need to be from a disproportionately impacted area, live Correct. from that area. I believe so, yes. so that, that is the, uh, in employing those people who are gonna be doing that type of outreach? He's, yes, he's got, one person who very candidly that's what she does and she goes out and does an outreach and that is the employee track that she follows to meet those requirements and i just wanted to clarify one other thing um in your packet um as part of their uh qualifying statement they do talk about how they do meet that social equity um uh, applicant so it is um, um uh, within the packet Awesome. Tracy, while you're standing there, um, this is obviously going to, like, I think this is the highest traffic count in Kane County, that section is what I understand, or one of. So we know it's going to be super busy. Um, has anybody talked to the police and got their feedback? Because what's going on at the car wash on weekends is crazy. So I got to imagine this is going to be, have you talked to the police? Yeah, I don't know if uh, we've had conversations with the police. Um, normal, you know, normally with just standalone businesses that that doesn't really come up. Um, obviously, we can absolutely reach out to them um, and have that conversation. Yeah, 
I think that, I mean, I, I think that's super important. I wish we would have had that, not, you know, nobody's perfect, but I'd just be interested to see what they see. And then Jim, have you talked to uh, Phil, is that his name, the fellow who owns Manpower? Have you sat down and tried to talk to him? Tom and I have sat down and had coffee. We've had a couple other meetings, and mm -hmm. Tom's comment was after we talked for two hours, just so you know, I'm going to object. I said, that's fine, just so you know, I'm going to pursue it. Okay. But yes, we have met, and um, we will continue to meet, and I will continue to be a good neighbor. And you're right, Bob Fitzsimmons should have been here. I can't believe he hung me out to dry, but you know, we did it next time. But we will be a good neighbor. You have my promise. I've been in Aurora a long time, and I think a couple aldermen up there can attest to if we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it. And we're going to make this a first-class run operation. There's going to be growing pains with it. I'm not going to stand here and say this is going to be boom. But we'll figure it out as we get there. And I think the, the additional parking was a good start. That was our that was our charter when we left here, what to do, how to handle it. So that's what we did. And we're we're willing to 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 address whatever else concerns, thoughts, conditions, the HVAC, all of that type of stuff. The sidewalk, that was kind of a but we're we're in and um, we'd like to we'd like to move on with this and get this thing going. Alderman Yamas, you have an amendment to offer? I do have an amendment to offer um, based on the sidewalks that we we're discussing. I don't know if legal or the clerk want to read the proposed language. Do you want to make a motion? For the do I have to specify the language for it or just no, in general? specify the motion and we'll read the language for it. Okay, so right, this time I'd offer up a motion. Uh, to amend this ordinance to include a contingency for a sidewalk along Church Road. Motion made by uh, for, for the amendment by Alderman Yama, second by Alderman Franco. Any discussion of the amendment? Will city staff read the amendment? That the, uh, the Alderman Yama's uh, amendment as proposed is that the petitioner install a sidewalk along the east side of Church Road right of way from the northern access of 2485 Church Road to Belta Road and install a sidewalk along the south side corporate boulevard right of way from Farnsworth, Farnsworth Avenue to the eastern access of the subject property. Mr. Any discussion Mayor, on the amendment? Alderman Jenkins. Wait a minute. You said along corporate boulevard. This diagram shows church up to Bilter and then Bilter to Farnsworth, Farnsworth down to the site. It has nothing to do with corporate boulevard. If I may, I, I do have a visual here. This is the, the second part of, of that sidewalk. So there's the first one on, on Church Road here, and then this is the one on Corporate Boulevard. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, from across Farnsworth on the east side, as it comes down, it goes into the Manpower site. That's called Corporate. I thought that was like... It's still Corporate Boulevard. Okay. Right. My mistake. There will be a pedestrian connection from Church Road <coughs> all the way over to the site. Mr. Mayor, on another the question. Um, okay, the Gaslight Manor, you said we're gonna have 30 parking spaces, right? Correct. Okay, is that, is that gonna be on their northern uh, parking lot area because when they have events and so forth? We, we have an agreement with him. We will work with him around his schedule. So we will designate where he wants us to. As I said, he did this before with employee parking lot for the mall. Yes. So he's been to the dance, so we will work with him accordingly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Yeah, the, the amendment does not have a time frame, and it probably should. We would just ask that it would be done before our occupancy. You're talking, before the, you're talking the amendment the with the sidewalk? I'm talking the sidewalk. Well, we, that will, I'm fine with that will be done before opening. Where's the I, where's the sidewalk going to go on? Sorry, where's the sidewalk going to go on Farnsworth? I, I know where the other one's going to go down the east side of Church. Where's the one on the other one going to go? Maybe you can pass that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Frank, while we're waiting to pass this, yeah. my uh, comment on the ask 
we asked that it be done prior to opening or we mandate it shall be done prior to opening? Because if we're going to put it in writing, let's get this done so it's actually done but prior to opening. Just mandated that it's got to be mandated, done before. Mandated, right. Because we, I'm fine with that. Yes, because staff said ask. I don't really... Mandated, if you like put it ask. in there. Okay, thank you. Would you like me to reread it with the amendment? Uh, that the peti petitioner install a sidewalk prior to occup occupancy along the east side of Church Road right of way from the northern access of 2485 Church Road to Belter Road and install a sidewalk along the south side of Corporate Boulevard right of way from Farnsworth Avenue to the eastern access of the subject property. Any further discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Yes. It would probably be appropriate to get consent for the council to accept the amendment to the amendment. Um, okay. Do we have a consent? If the alderman would accept it as a friendly amendment. As a friendly amendment. Any objections? Okay. Thank you. Again, hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the amendment only? Alderman Yanis? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hart Burns? Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lachi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. 11 A's. Motion carries amendment is approved. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Tracy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted to let you guys all know also that uh, Section 10 of the ordinance has been updated. Um, I can read it uh, for you guys so you, you're aware of the update. Um, it says that the property legally described as Exhibit A shall remain in the underlining zoning classification of PDD with a special use plan development, or I'm sorry, yeah, special, I'm sorry, PDDS plan development district with a special use. The special use permit shall terminate and the classification of PDD plan development district shall be in full force in effect without further action by the city council if said property number one fails to obtain a conditional registration license for uh, cannabis uh, dispensing facility by the state within 180 days of the authorization of the permit. Number two, fails to commence its use as a cannabis dispensing facility within one year of authorization of the permit. And number three, increases its use as a cannabis dispensing facility for the period greater than 30 days, for a period greater than 30 days. And I'll ask the city attorney, do we need to amend this then, with these changes? I updated it into, into the ordinance, so it's in there already. For discussion on the ordinance itself, uh, Alderman Yanis. I, I forgot to add earlier, like Alderman Lofty mentioned, we did receive some calls from residents in the area that were concerned about uh, parking, which I think we addressed it, and uh, the safety of residents possibly walking uh, down church and farms. So all that is addressed. The only remaining issue now is traffic, and there is that concern that this dispensary, not necessarily is going to be the same uh, scenario that um, as what's occurring on, on Route 31, because that was the first and, and only in the area. This is, I think, can be different. But even then, it, there's a concern for increased traffic on Farnsworth. So um, I've spoken to city staff, and what we're looking to do is six months into your operations, um, we could possibly run a, a traffic study to see whether traffic has increased in the area and how we can uh, address that. So those, those concerns don't go unheard. And I think it's not only is traffic increased, but operationally, are we all comfortable that this is going in the right direction? And we are more than happy to do that, put that, mandate that into whatever we need to mandate that into, but we'll find with that. Okay, any other discussion? City <coughs> Clerk, please, uh, <coughs> City Clerk, please uh, call the roll. Alderman Yamas? <coughs> yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Harburns? Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lopsy? No. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. 10 A's, 1 nay. Motion carried, the ordinance is adopted. Thank you all very, very much. Appreciate it. We know there's a lot of teeth gnashing on this. I appreciate the 
time and opportunity to work through the problems. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, will the clerk please read the next item on the agenda? 20-0008, a resolution approving the conversion of the Aurora Public Library to a library maintained and operated under a Public Library District Act of Say 1991. Again. Motion made by Alderman Hartford, second by Alderman Garza. Any discussion? Alderman Franco? Yeah, I had, uh, at the Committee of the Hall, I had some concerns and I had asked um, the library board or staff could uh, give me some information basically on the chances or the procedures of making the elected portion of the board somewhat regional as opposed to all at large and uh, doing what the park district had done and seeing what that would take and how long they may take to accomplish and I, I think John you may have some information. Sure, um, uh, thank you for the time. Uh, since the meeting last week, uh, one we did have a conversation with our general outside counsel for the library and also I have had a discussion with the executive director of the Fox Valley Park District. A uh, long story short that a um, legisl state legislation would have to be approved to change the, the current Illinois state statute for library board construction. Right now it is at a, as, as an at-large board, um, but in discussions with the Park District, uh, you know, they were able to have a, a single entity uh, amendment. Um, so as my, my commitment to, uh, to the council and the community is that we will begin that process, having discussions with our local legislators uh, to devise a proper way to uh, you know, have a representative elected uh, library board. Uh, I asked the executive director how long does this process take and he said typically it takes between a year and a half to two years. That's how long it took them for the park district to ultimately get that approved. So uh, as I said before last week uh, at the meeting that the first uh, actual election would be April of 21. Um, so we're a little over a year, year out. Not sure if uh, you know we'd be able to get that in place. Obviously, you know, that would take uh, a lot of effort by the local legislator, but you know we are uh, committed to go through that process to, to make sure we have fair, equitable representation uh, for the library for the entire community. Thank you. Alderman Bud. Curiosity: uh, Is Chicago's are they're, they're appointing Chicago's board? Um, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I, Right. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, will City Clerk please call the roll. Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Art Burns? Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bud? Yes. Alderman Lopsy? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Alderman O'Connor? Sorry. 11 A's. Motion carries. Thank the you. resolution is approved. Will the clerk please read the next item? 20-0010, resolution authorizing approval of the 2020 to 2024 consolidated plan, 2020 annual action plan, update to the neighborhood revitalization strategy area, and annual action plan, so substantial moved. amendment 19 number three. It's been moved by Alderman Jenkins, second by Alderman Hartburns. We have a staff report. Uh, Alderman requested a little more information on one of the goals established in the five-year plan, so I provided that in your packet. It's, um, it's a summary of what we looked at when we were figuring out how we wanted to uh, best prioritize our federal dollars over the next five years. Um, uh, the first uh, goal in there, expand the affordable housing stock, uh, I just want to let you know how we arrived at that. Um, we wanted to try and keep that as broad as possible because of the number of interested parties that we talked to. Uh, we held 10 focus groups, one public forum, five public meetings, and two public hearings. Um, within that, we talked to housing developers, special need populations, business owners, um, veterans groups, nonprofits, residents, um, and everyone in between. Uh, we felt by keeping this goal broad, uh, we can encompass all of those populations. So for expanding affordable housing stock, we'd be looking at senior housing, persons with disabilities, permanent supported housing, uh, housing for veterans, as well as families and individuals. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions within the summary that I provided. Um, any discussion, Alderman Franco? So I had um, I had asked for some of that information, and I had met with staff and Chris um, about some of these. And I, my concern was of the eight objectives. The first one was uh, to expand the affordable housing, and as Chris mentioned, um, it, it seems to be a little bit more focused. They were looking at groups if they're more in need, would be the veterans and disabled. 
uh, and seniors, so that was somewhat more palatable to me. Uh, he did provide some information as far as percentages, so if you can see the ranking um, and affordable housing share, Aurora is about 53%. Compared to Emerald Junior's Neighborville's example, seven and a half percent, and this is this is the numbers I was looking for because I think that in the end, you know, it doesn't seem as equitable. But I wanted to get real numbers to see where we are compared to some other uh, communities. Um, but as we talked about, I was somewhat satisfied with not just that, but that um, no matter what we do going forward, it's not going to be carte blanche that they're going to have to go through the city council where they add more housing, more housing development. So we're still going to be able to vote on that. But I do have a question, and I don't see uh, Dave Debo here, but for our economic staff, and this won't affect tonight, but going forward, I would like to get some data on when you have a certain percentage of affordable housing, what does that do to community? If it's 40%, 50%, 60%, is a desirable amount for economic growth? Is, is there a certain amount, if you go over that threshold, it, it deteriorates your chances for economic growth, or you need a certain amount? So that data, I'd still like to see, and that wouldn't necessarily be on you, Chris, it'd probably be on, on maybe David Debo or, or Marty or somebody over there. Oh, I'm sorry, I just woke Marty up over there. Um, but because that's going forward, I just want to make sure that if we do this, that we don't hinder our growth in this community. And that's kind of what these questions are for. So if we can get more data going forward, not to affect this, uh, ordinance, but others going forward. I just kind of like to know that. So we have a plan where we want to be. If we're at 53%, 53% is a good spot, then we got to you know keep it around there. So so we know where we're at going for. That's that's really what I was looking for. I just don't want to hinder our growth and our economic development. Is you know because right now I think we're doing a very good job going forward. But if we do too much with affordable housing, I'll make sure it's not inconsistent with our growth and, and hampers that. That's that was my the, the gist of my question. So I appreciate the information you gave. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburn? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Buck? Yes. Alderman Lachi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. 11 A's. Um, motion is approved. A resolution is adopted. Uh, there's nothing under new business, so we don't need a motion for that. So the request for referrals listed on the agenda referred to the Planning Council and Planning, Planning Commission. Uh, next item is a Treasury Report, December 2019. Is there a motion? Motion has been made by Alderman Jenkins, seconded by Alderman Hartburns. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, do we need a, is this a roll call? Or all in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed, motion carried. Um, and uh, it's been mo uh, made to uh, by Alderman Hartburn, second by Alderman Jenkins to um, pay our bills. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed, motion carried. Uh, roll call on that please, City Clerk. Item 20-0055, the bills, um, Alderman Yamas? Yes. Alderman Garza? Yes. Alderman Masiakos? Yes. Alderman Donnell? Yes. Alderman Franco? Yes. Alderman Seville? Yes. Alderman Hartburns? Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bug? Yes. Alderman Lachi? Yes. Alderman Jenkins? Yes. Eleven A's. Motion carries, the bills are approved. There's a motion on the table for adjournment by Alderman Harper, second by Alderman Franco. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye opposed, and we, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.